The Marketing Audit, the video guide of version 1.0. I reserve the right to re-record a version of this as an upgrade should, as a result of discussions around the subject, we need to modify a section of the assessment task, upgrade, change, or clarify something. Please check Wattle to ensure that you are looking at the most recent version of the content. So the audit, the purpose of us using this audit task is to apply a practical application of the theory. There's a couple of things that are important to me as a marketing educator and a marketing practitioner to ensure my students understand. And chief amongst those things is being able to conceptualize the value offer and take it from a theory to this is how a product, a physical object in my possession creates value for me, both as a theory and practice. Also, market segmentation is one of the fundamentals of marketing practice. So what we want to be able to do is use the audit as an opportunity for you to explore these two concepts, offerings that have value and segmentation put the two together and give you a chance to document it. As with the take home exam fast paced online assignment, our aim here is to create an educational experience that both assesses, but also teaches. It's a two for one deal, and that's your value proposition here. At this point, in the semester, when the assessment task is due, you will have covered 14 chapters of the text. Any one of those 14 chapters can provide you with content, insight, and valuable information towards the marketing audit. As you'll note, the text is 19 chapters long, so there are five chapters for which we are not going to regard it as fair to try and expect you to have covered that. So in terms of the marketing mix, although we will have raised it in early chapters and we'll mention it a few times, we are going to draw a line under product and price and say, these are the two elements of the mix. These two elements are going to be in the marketing order. Distribution and promotion will feature lightly and in passing, but they are not central parts because you haven't had lectures on those yet by the time this assessment task is due. So we do understand time, linearity, and try and keep things reasonably fair in terms of, have you had a chance to cover this material in class? Have we taught it to you? If we haven't, then we're not going to assess it. All right, the mark and the audit, the overview. First thing, it's worth the same weight as the final exam and the fast paced assignment. It has different requirements though. And part of this is we are getting you to engage, it's roughly around the same word length, we are being fair on that front, but there will be a greater level of energy exerted because we're going to give you more time to exert that energy. To make this work, we recommend starting early, we recommend engaging in short bursts over a longer period, rather than trying to blitz everything on Thursday afternoon to Friday morning of week 10. If you are a person who requires the high pressure, high stakes gambit of, I write better under pressure, I do all my best work just on deadline, let me introduce you to the concept of the false deadline and let me introduce you to the concept of multiple drafts, less pressure, less stress. I say this is a 20 year veteran and also someone who does just in time academia and will look at a conference deadline and go, yeah, I can make that, it's 48 hours. It's a lot easier when you don't do it that way. But if that's your thing, that's your thing, go with your strength. 
I recommend developing a new strength. Yeah. Let's get started on a couple of the elements here. The group requirements. Groups consist of between one and four people. If you are not a team player, then you are in a group of one. The audit, once you have had a chance to look over its specifications and requirements, you may find that the audit is actually more fun if you do it in a group. You may find it's easier if you do it in a group. However, you may find that working in a group is actually more painful than it is beneficial, so groups of one. If you are in isolation, in remote, and you can't access other people in the subject, you can still do this task because it's designed to benefit individuals and benefit groups. So there's a certain trade-off here that at the end of the day, it can be done between one, two, three, or four people. It's not a task that loans itself nicely to people being able to go and just divvy out, shuffle up the sections and say, okay, you get part three, you get part four, you get part one, you get part two. It's much more holistic. So if you are going to work in a group, then there isn't a case of, all right, player one, step out, cut, write me the first bit, you got 300 words, call me back when you're done. It doesn't work well like that. It's not designed to do that. It's designed for you to come together to hold discussions, to draw on each other's knowledge, and then create a holistic single or single voice, not necessarily single author, but single voice object that is the assignment. Now the word length, we are wanting you to stay around 2,000 words. There's going to be people who are going to go, yes, but can I have more? In which case, yeah, sure, fine. Up to 2,500, but from my view, it's a lot easier if you write it around 2,000 words. If you're below 1,800, it's gone wrong. Turn it around, try and make it go right. It will be submitted by Turnitin. You will be working, if you're working in a group, group leader submits to Turnitin. It is due in Friday week 10 and it will be an absolute rough end of the pineapple for us to try and get it back to you by week 12. Damn it, we're gonna try. So, I'd recommend not asking us very much during week 11. Give the crew space to do the marking. Also, on Turnitin submission, one member of the team submits it, and the other members of the team submit a cover sheet. I will have those documents available on Wattle for you. Now this task has three learning outcomes attached to it. How marketing works. Now, a learning outcome of illustrate how marketing is integrated with other functional areas of the business. This is all about the value creation. This is all about the strategy. How does marketing tie tactics and strategy together? Apply marketing concepts, illustrating the importance of marketing decisions. There is a decision that you will have to make you are in Introduction to Marketing, we're giving you a practice. This assessment task is a training in, here is a simulation exercise where you'll make a simulated business decision. That's learning outcome six. The critical evaluation of case studies. We are going to use your own experience as a source of evidence, and this is how we're going to do part of the case study. Identifying and analyzing problems, making recommendations. These are also features of the task. So let's look at the first aspect here. You are your case study. You are going to engage in a level of self-analysis. As a marketing student, you're going to think like a marketer and you're going to present yourself as, a, as evidence. So to do that, we're going to separate the process of answering the question and the documentation of the answer. So there are two stages, two parts. There is the work you have to do in order to have the material, the knowledge, the evidence, the information, so that you can document and write it. 
Part one is not what you submit. And should you submit part one, expect a very ordinary, substandard, disappointing grade. If you choose to consciously ignore the requirements of the assessment, the requirements of the reporting task, I will respect your decision and give you the points that decision has earned you. I will not try to talk you out of it. So please, work with us so we can give you points and work with us by engaging in the two steps. Undertake the analysis, then undertake the report. Let's talk through the analysis process first. Step one, you will need to have selected an offering that has value. The marketing audit is an audit of an offering that has value. These requirements are non-negotiable. I will know whether you have listened to this by whether you try to negotiate. So the requirement is, the object, the offering that has value, must be a physical good. It cannot be a service, it's not software, it's not all sorts of other things, it's an object, a physical item. Something that you can define clearly, something that all members of your group have some experience with. So I'm going to recommend making it cheap, cheerful and obvious. I'm going to recommend that every member of your group buys one and tries one out if you're not already using it. You're not going to get bonus points for weirdness, randomness or obscurity. That's for other subjects and life in general. You are going to be asked to engage with a physical object and you're going to do an analysis of the value that object creates for you and the value that object creates for your group mates. So, physical objects fits the task and it's what I want you to do for the assessment task, so please work with me. Give me the best opportunity that I can to have my team give you grades. So, physical goods, step one. Step two. Each member of the crew, each member of the squad, of your team, needs to engage with the use of the physical goods. And individually, you want to be able to come back to your group and say, well, this is the value offering. This is, what, this is the offering that has value that this product provided to me. And you want to be able to do so in a marketer's language. So the product chapters, the price chapters, consumer behavior, value creation, how did this object be valuable for you in the consumption of the object? You want to be able to do this, and now if you're doing this solo, you're reporting back to yourself. If you're doing this in a team, you're reporting back to the rest of your team, and you're explaining the value that you got out of the use of the product. In this process, everyone individually has a report in of the value that they've received. Step three of this process is that you're going to identify yourselves as members of market segments. Understandably, if you are in a segment of one and you are in a solo, then you are automatically a homogenous market of yourself. You can move on to the next slide easily. If you are working in a team, you want to come to an agreement in that team as to which of the marketing segmentation variables you're going to use to describe yourself and your teammates are going to describe their selves so that you are all using the same set of variables. It's important that everyone is on the same page here and everyone's using the same variables so that if your answers to those variables differ, 
that's a good thing. And if the answers to those variables are the same, that's a good thing. We need you to have at least four, you may choose to use more, but at least four marketing segmentation variables as described at some point somewhere through the course, through the first of the 15 chapters, that you can use to describe yourself and then you can bring together so that you are looking at your group and going, do we share the same market segment traits? Do we say, share the same market segmentation variable answers? Are we all from the same geography? Are we all the same age bracket, same psychographic bracket? You are looking to compare your group with each other. And then you're going to do a couple of analysis elements. Remember that learning outcome? It's coming into play. First thing, if you're running solo, this is not going to be any different to the experience of what you're going to have if you're running in a team. How does the value offer of the product connect to your market segment variables? What is it about you as the market segment and your use of this product that are connected? How are you and people like you going to get value from this product? Remember, this is still an analysis and discussion phase. You wanna throw around a lot of ideas here so you can just start generating the answer but you need to really share brainstorms, sticky notes, whiteboards, whatever your method is. Get a lot of ideas out here. If you are in the group and the group differs between the variables, what you are looking for here is what changes, does the value offer change between members of the group? If you're soloing it, you have to scenario what would change. But if you're in a group and the value offer changes, then you can say, well, what, what is it about that segment? Is there a segmentation variable that predicts that change? Similarly, what you're going to be doing then is going, what, if we change a feature of this value offer, what sort of, could it attract other people from different segments? Would it be more attractive to members of our segments? What happens? So your hypothetical here, your case study scenarioing you're doing here is to go, what happens if we change a part of the value offer? And what, or, and or, what happens if we change part of the, the feature? Now we're leading you up to an element here, and that's the ANSOF matrix. In the ANSOF matrix, they ask you the question of existing customer, new customer, existing product, new product. If you change a segment variable, it becomes a new customer. If you change a product variable, it becomes a new product. So we're getting you to workshop and scenario out a couple of ideas here. So you can then go in this final third question, think how would we best if we want, we are going to be tasked with creating a growth strategy for this particular physical good, do we make no changes? Do we appeal to the existing market with the existing offer? Do we make a change that appeals it to a new audience? So do we change or do we find a new audience who would be attracted to the existing product? Do we make a change to the new product to find a new audience? Or do we produce a new product entirely for this new audience? I'm gonna suggest that the new product for the new audience, new entire product is not what you're looking for. So step five is you are going to be making an Ansoft justification, then you're going to have to justify it. So you wanna be bashing this one around the table saying, even if you're in a solo, you wanna work out, okay, which is my best option and why? Why is it my best option? You're then going to follow that through with, you've got two elements of the marketing mix you're gonna work with. Price and product. Do you need to change either? And an internal consistency radar flag here is if you have said that it's going to be a change of a feature, 
then you have to recognize the change of feature here in the mixed variant. You've got to be internally consistent as a marketer. So these are the processing steps. These are the thought processes. This is why it's going to be really tough to do this on Thursday afternoon of week 10. You want some time. You want some time to discuss. You want some time to sit around and brainstorm and barnstorm your way through variants, alternates. You're going to think through more stuff than you're going to use. And we're doing this for the purpose of getting you to explore alternatives to follow up different scenarios, different solutions to enhance your creativity, to improve the final offer so you're picking from a range of good choices, and to lay down a whole series of thoughts and ideas that you can then draw upon when you hit the final exam. So, let's talk about how we're going to write the assignment up. Let's talk about that documentation process for a moment. In the reporting process, there are five parts, four of which are going to score points, one of which is just has to be there. Statement of contribution, statement of offering, statement of audience, value per audience, strategic content. That's your, that's your overview summary. Statement of contributions, whether you are running solo or you are running in a pack, every assignment that gets submitted needs to have the statement of contribution on the first page, and that is, your name, your student number, and the percentage contribution to the final paper. All members of the squads must be listed. If you're not listed, you're not in the squad and you don't get the points. And your percentage should reach 100%, one would hope, but we'll take an approximation. Close, as close to, if not actually 100, 100%. So your statement of contribution got to be there. The offering that has value. There needs to be a descriptive element. I need to know what the product is. The marketing crew needs to be sitting there going, okay, what is it? So we're going to say, all right, you get one photo of the product, one product photo. You need a text-based description of what it is, what it does, what does it cost, and where did you get it from? We'd like to thank the distribution nicks for making a cameo appearance here, that's distribution, that's that covered. What is it? So this would be somewhere around the actual product. What does it do? This would be the core product. What does it cost? This is the price. Don't forget, more than financial price can be in the costing here. Descriptive. Analytic. What aspects of product marketing theory are in play? What aspects of pricing are in play? We've got a whole lot of theories around offerings that have value, bring them into effect. Which aspect of value co-creation is there? Are we talking value and ownership, value and use, value and exchange? What's the value? How's it fit? Bring it together. Make your argument, make your case, write it up, use your reference and support, and give us a statement of the offering that has value so we know what the offering is about, and we know you know the marketer's way of describing it. Then tell us about the market segments present in your group. Again, use the segmentation variable language. Just let us know that we can trust you to speak marketing here. Segmentation theory, available resources on segmentation, the market segments, we've asked you to pick four, give us a breakdown. You can present it visually, but you also need to have text. You need to have words here, and that market segmentation needs to be part of the argument in your assignments. Because the next step in the reporting is you're going to explain how, for each of the given market segments within your particular framework, how is value created? What's the interplay between the needs, wants, character traits of the market segments and the value offer. 
you're going to find the consumer behavior chapter will be super useful here so I expect some reference to it this is all about using the marketing theory and I'm asking you to explore to think to analyze and now to write up how value as marketers as apprentice marketers how do you see value being created here now if you're in a big group you might find that this is a bit of a, a tough ask and that's your trade for being in a bigger group if you're in a small group you might find that this is a bit of a tough ask because it's just you trying to unpack how you're getting value from this and you've got no one to bounce it off so there's a pro and a con to group and solo here group has potentially multiple segments solo definitely has one segment how you argue it here is what's going to be scored that's what's going to matter to us how well you make your case and then to close out the paper you're going to have to do something decision making Antoff matrix comes with four four possible choices you only get to have one you do not get to say multiple, you get to say one. You get to say, this is the Ansoft matrix strategy that I would use for my growth strategy. Then, given you've chosen that, you're going to justify it. There's gonna be, you know, why would you use this? Why would this be the right combination? Then you're gonna pay out the tactics. You're gonna tell us, given what you've chosen, given what your strategy decision is, are there any changes that you would make to the price and the product of the value offer that you have been running as your case study here? If you choose to stay the same, you've got to justify that every bit as hard as if you choose to change. Maintenance is a decision. Change is a decision. All marketing is an experiment that we run see the reaction and make a decision, maintain or change. So I'm asking you to pick a strategy, pick a tactic, and then talk about how that strategy would influence your tactics. All right, some technicals to close out the sequence. Technical number one, A4 page, trebuchet, Times New Roman, Calibri, Arial, make it readable, size 10 or size 12. The headings are acceptable. Please use paragraphs for the love of the marker's eyes. Use paragraphs. You do not need an executive summary and you are not allowed to have an index. If you have an index and an executive summary, we know you didn't read the guidelines here, so we know to expect a bad assignment. Yeah. Don't, don't cough up easy points by skipping advice. Word count, we've gone over it a couple of times. We require you to reference quotes, count, tables don't, visuals don't. The reference list itself does not count to the word count. So as soon as it says reference and goes after there, it doesn't count to the word count. But anything between the first word of your paper and the last word of your conclusion counts to the word count. Please stick with the rules. It's an intro subject, we've got parameters, the parameters are there to help you. Referencing, you will be expected to use referencing. This is a university assignment. It comes with the requirement that you acknowledge your influences. I will be insisting on in-text citation and I want you to cite it where you use it. Life is so much easier for the markers if we get to the end of the sentence and we can see a citation there. We know that you were using the idea in that sentence. Go with us, support us, help us. In terms of creating your references, Google Scholar is your best friend. The library is also super useful. There are multiple sources and databases and all sorts of cool things that you are dropping a bucket of money on through your university fees. Go use them. When you're on campus, Google Scholar lets you access paid journals. Each journal article is worth about 25 euros. Help yourself to an expensive library of content whilst you are studying here. In terms of using 
So you go off, you grab yourself an article, you read that article, take notes from the article. When you use those notes, when you use the ideas from the paper and you use them inside your assignment, acknowledge that you are influenced by the works of others and you score points. However, there is no direct quote that exists that is useful as an answer to the question. I custom wrote this question about 20 minutes before I recorded this video. So there's no direct quote that exists out there that will be of value to you in the pursuit of this paper. Don't use direct quotes. If you're thinking that what you'll do is you'll just copy paste it, file off the serial numbers, change a word here, shift F7, thesaurus a word there, don't. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your life. Don't sell yourself out because you're better than that. What I care about, why I ask you to use references is I want you to learn from multiple sources. I want you to see the ideas of many people and then come together and customize, create something that is your interpretation, supported by their ideas, that you are so confident in your work, you know when it's you, original, and you know when it's you, cited, and you supported by citation, that you use that evidence, you use those references, and I know that you've put the yards in and that you're acknowledging it. The people who have created that idea, helped you create that idea. It's all about how you deliver. It's all about getting the best bang for the buck and the citation, the in-text citation where you are acknowledging the use of an idea is the best return on effort in this paper. Lastly on the technicals, all members of the group will receive the same grade for the assignment. You are under no obligation to be in a group and you are not obligated to carry someone. Should someone not be providing adequate contribution to the group, you may throw that person out of your group because solo is an option. You may throw yourself out of the group and go, nah, forget it, I'm, I feel like I'm doing all the heavy lifting, I'm going solo. You are not obligated to be in a group, you're not obligated to have group members. Working in partnership with others is a partnership to protect by giving value to those who you are working with in exchange to the value that you are receiving back. There is no obligation to be in a group. Everyone gets the same points for their group assignment. You rise and fall as one, as a unit. If the unit is held together by a phenomenal last stand, the unit still wins. If the unit is held together by all four people operating as a single seamless operation, then the unit still wins. Find what you do best. Do you Are you a team player? Are you a project leader? If your contribution is to keep everybody together, to be the manager, if your teammates are happy with that, then your teammates are happy with that. Find what you do well in groups and work to it. So to recap, the marketing audit, it requires a real world product. You're going to go do real world things with yourself as the case study. It is about two distinct, discrete performances. The report which you will write to submit and the preparation for the report. Please do not cross the streams. When you present me with the report, just the report. Just the report. You don't have to give me an appendix with other things in it. Just give me the report. Show me that you can follow the guidance, that you can work to your strengths, that you can work to the assets and materials we provide for you. And we will be happy. Things will go well and grades will be given.